trying to get in their end zone. Now for Rock tries to give him some breathing room and he's going to take a shot deep downfield and open is Bernard Berrien and the former Bear will go 99 yards for a touchdown. Wow. What's up everyone? I'm Jason Ball and as always I have D Money, Donovan Scott, and together, we are Moneyball. Today, we have a very special guest. He played 15 seasons in the NFL, playing with seven different teams. He was elected to the 1996 Pro Bowl and holds an unbreakable record with a 99-yard touchdown pass. Ladies and gentlemen, Gus Farrat. Gus, thanks for joining us. Yeah, Woo! thanks for having me on. I, anytime I can talk ball, ball cards, uh, you know, we talk a lot of football all the time, so just doing something different is a lot of fun. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I, I was telling Donovan I'd love to sit and talk with you about your whole career and everything like that. You had an amazing career, a long NFL career, but and this this episode is going to be a little different. This is uh this is on on baseball cards, sports cards, and uh, should be should be a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, you know, and my kids still yell at me and say, "Dad, why don't you just like get a rookie from every year and get them to sign it when you're playing?" I'm like. Just don't think of that stuff when you're yeah. playing. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, well, well, uh, that wasn't you, a thing either back then. Now they're all exchanging jerseys and everything, and like that wasn't a thing. Well, we kind of did that. Like Jim Kelly yeah. used to do that a lot. You know, exchange jerseys at halftime, okay. and or I mean after the game and stuff like that. And I did that a couple times with, with guys I knew pretty well. Yeah. Um, you know, but also not all the teams allow you to do that. Right? Oh really? They, oh yeah, they get kind of stingy with that. Yeah, stuff. they want to they want to fine you or something, right? Well, they just don't want to let you, you know, like when I left the Lions, I said, I'm going to take my helmet, you know, and they were like, no, what? it's a liability. You can't have it. I said, why is it a liability? They said, well, if your kids put it on and get hurt with it, you could. I said, nobody's doing that. Dude, that Never heard of that. In my life. Yeah. So like I had to buy a Lions helmet offline somewhere. And, uh, <laughs> you know, some it's stupid. That's too much, like man. That. Hold on. So this. The... No wonder Barry the retired. The, the QB of the Lions had to buy a Lions helmet. That's crazy. That's nuts. Yeah. And I don't know where I got it somewhere. Um, but, you know, it just. It's how it is, man. It, it, there's every team is different, every owner is different, and how yeah. they approach the guys and and uh, but it's a lot of fun. My favorite parts of the locker room, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah the cool. guys. Yeah. Now, uh, now I didn't tell Donovan yet, this yet, but um, I I, I want to say your favorite your favorite player to collect is also his, I believe, Roberto Clemente. Is that is that? That's correct? why I got my shirt on today. Ah, I mean these these. This is my favorite. You know, growing up in Pittsburgh, my dad listened to transistor radio on the, on the swing outside all the time, falling asleep after working in a garden. I grew up out in the country. I mean, Clemente was my guy. And then when I moved back to Pittsburgh, getting to know Roberto Jr. Um, has been a thrill. Wow. And, uh, you know, yeah. on, on in that sense, uh, got to know him through a friend of mine. And then uh, he came over, he, his favorite meal, spaghetti. Right. So he comes over uh, the house. My wife cooks spaghetti dinner. We're drinking wine. We're having a good time. And all of a sudden he starts getting like kind of somber. And I'm like, what's going on? He goes, you know, and we were talking about cards and all this stuff. And he goes, I lost all my dad's card in a flood at my mom's house. Oh, so they had, you know, he, there's all these cards. So I go upstairs and I bring him like a stack of 15 Roberto Clemente cards. Wow. And he's goodness. just balling. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah, just, yeah. and from all these years, I never even had him graded or anything. And I don't even know what they're, I just said, if somebody should have him, it's probably that guy. You or, know what I mean? Like, gesture, man. Yeah. 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 You know, and and I didn't give him the rookie card. I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> You're like, here, take all these commons. You take all these base bent cards here. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to have some of those commons back, but you know what yeah, I mean? No, like, right. It, it, right. It is my favorite player. I mean, I just saw it. And they always, they're always sharing stuff about him. Like you watch Twitter and somebody put on Twitter this morning, greatest throw ever. And it's Roberto Clemente thrown on in from right field on a, just a rope to home plate. And everybody knew, and you can't run on this guy. Yeah. He's become, for, for some kind of reason, he keeps coming up on Moneyball. I mean, I think we first talked to him in episode one. And for one reason or another, he keeps coming up on it. And, I, I share the same sentiment with you, Gus. He was an absolute incredible ball player and humanitarian, you know, and um, yeah, that was Dwyer Brown's 
um, from Field Warrior of Dreams. Brown. Yeah, we had on. It was his yep. favorite as well yep. to collect. Yep. It was his favorite to collect. So that yep. was it's really cool. But he's obviously left a huge impact on a lot of a lot of people. And the guy, what what can you what more can you say about him? I mean, yeah, my, I mean, I, if you guys hmm. ever get to Pittsburgh, seriously, if you ever get to Pittsburgh, we're there a lot. I go a lot. We're close. Have you, yeah. have you been to the Clementi Museum yet? Is it in not. the park? It's not in the park, right? No, no, no. It's an old firehouse. It's in the Strip District. That I haven't, no. Oh, my gosh. So somebody donated a graded set of every Clemente card. This guy was from Washington, D.C., and every Clemente card is graded and in a case No shit. in there. And it's all his memorabilia. It's a part of the plane that crashed when he died. Wow. It's all the yeah. stuff in the Clementi Museum is just it's magical when you go in there. I I'll mean, be there I'll be there. Thank you very much for telling me because I'm going to be there next month, and that's I'm, I'm going. You're going to you're going to go. Into the, the the emoji with the mind blown. Yeah, <laughs> you, you um you're going to go in there and you're going to walk into some rooms that have memorabilia that is you know I think they have like he won a car for being an MVP and it's in there. Okay, um, wow. stuff like that. All his gloves, bats. Now, where the, did the family donate all the stuff? I mean, just like- no, no, it's just an incredible story. The family really doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, really? It's a nonprofit place. This this gentleman bought the the it's an old firehouse with the yeah. pole coming down and all that. Okay. You know what yeah. I mean? Like really yeah. cool place. He bought it. And yeah, obviously, I think now the family has put some stuff in there, but most of it came from other people. And then a lot of it came from the pirates. They didn't want it. They were going to just throw it away back in whenever. And cool. it was just tons of Clemente stuff. And he he just took it all and started a museum. And then there's just so much in there. I can't even tell you the stuff that, that like people would just drool over. Yeah, and you're funny. right, you know, and it talks about, and when you go in there, you read about all the schools that are named after him, yep. you know, I, I, you know, all the parks that are named after him, not just in these states, but all over right. the world. Yep. You know, and and I'll tell you this story about his son, Roberto Jr. I mean, obviously he has other kids, but I got to know Roberto Jr. And he was on my podcast and we were talking and I said, you know, you've been through a lot in your life. Uh, well, you know, how's it going? What's you know, what's your dad's legacy mean to you? And he goes, Gus, I never have been able to be Roberto Clemente Jr. I've never been able to be myself right. because when people meet me, it's my dad they're meeting. It's not right. me. Right. So he went through this whole emotional talk about it. And uh, it was pretty intense, yeah. you know, like where he said, here I am. I'm his son. I'm junior. But when I go to schools, when I go meet people, they're like, it's never about me. It's about my dad. And yeah. so he had a lot of trauma with that. And then, yeah, it's got to be tough to deal with. Yeah. So it's just the whole Clemente thing. It's just. It, it, it's an amazing story and um you know it just to be friends with roberto jr was always my dad would have loved it right my dad passed away like 19 years ago but that was his favorite player that's wow. awesome yeah that's now doubt does he look just like him no 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 okay. he, he does i mean i i think he's a good mix between his mom and his dad okay but, okay but um but you know just the stories they have you know and then roberto jr goes anywhere he wants right any game uh, yeah, he's got a he's got a pass yeah, yeah. He, used to, he used to call the yankee games you know up there and and you know he can do a lot of things and it's just it's just a man then his brother Luis is kind of the same way did any um, of them play ball yeah i think uh roberto jr made it the furthest okay um out of any of the family members but um you know i think that every when you're that kid Everybody yeah. has super. It's just like any kid, you know. Can you imagine your expectations? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's like um, so I had a good friend who played hockey, Keith Kachuk. His yeah. sons, yeah. his sons Matthew and Brady are in sure. the league now, and they're they're exceeding any expectation yeah. anybody could yeah. had, right? But that doesn't happen to a lot of, you know, it's 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 a tough road. Yeah, yeah. Now that picture behind you of Clemente is that from like a special moment? Is that his? Is that his rookie rookie year? Uh, you know what? That's it's another good story. So when I left college, before I um, I left after my last year in football, my senior year, and I came back home because my wife was going to Pitt, and I'm like, okay, I got to get an internship to finish school, which wasn't hard. But I worked in Three Rivers. I worked for the Pirates. Okay. And um, you know, 
Steelers, they, the Pirates had a, a strength training program, but I got to train all the front office people and I still know a bunch of them. But yeah. so the, the camera guy, the, you know, the photographer for the team, he's like, Hey, one day he goes, Hey, come with me. I got to show you something, oh, uh, you know, just getting to know. And I go in this little closet area and there's just picture after picture, all these black and whites. And I have, I have so many of them. And I took them all home. I, and I said, he goes, just take whatever you want, dude. We got so many. Take So Clemente, I took them all home to my dad. My dad framed all these pictures. And we used to go to card shows. I had so many. He'd take these framed pictures. I mean, it was like Vance. Like, it was you name the Steelers, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody. Pirates, yeah. And my dad would take them and try to barter for cards at card shows. <laughs> Because we didn't have any money. He didn't have any yeah. money. You know what I mean? So he's Probably like, worked, hey, I'll right? trade you this big. Yeah. I mean, he got, <laughs> you know, my dad was this guy. He loved to collect the whole set. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That's he, what you did back in the day, though. And That's... I used to tell him, I said, Dad, just get the rookie you love, right? <laughs> out of that set. Just get one card out of that set. No, oh, no, no. The, the whole set's I, the, the most important. I remember I remember the 1987 top set, the, that wooden border baseball set. Yeah. And and I had to have the full set of that for some reason. And and I, I don't think there was any less than 800 cards in that set. Oh, and yeah. It, it was just but I, I had all, I got all his bins in the back. And uh, and the thing about it that it's kind of funny when you go through some of the boxes he had, I still have, you know, and he'll write he'll write on the end of the box what cards he still needs. Or there's a little piece of paper in there that he would write yep, on the cards yep. and then he'd go through them all all the time. I mean, there was nothing ever in sleeves. You know what right. I mean? There was nothing right. ever like that. He never even thought about grading a card. Yeah. You know, and um, it's all about collecting that set, you know, and I think the card he ever he spent the most money on ever was like a I think it was a 92 top Shaq Shaquille O'Neal. It was like the gold, good gold one. Yeah. And he, and he bought that card. I don't know what he paid for, like 35 bucks. And he goes, I can't believe I paid 35 bucks for this card. <laughs> That's you awesome. Know? And the pandemic hits, and I'm like, I'm sure he's slipping over in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that changed everything. I mean, no. now, now they they still uh, they still send cards out to you to to sign, right? Uh, I just did a deal with Panini. Just you know, you know, sign so many cards for you know some bucks, and yeah, and it's just the stickers. I do, you know, right. I yeah. think sometimes they get you where if they're going to make like uh, a flawless or something like that and, you know, do a couple on card autos. But I mean, that's really for your, your big, big name guys. That they do that for now. Yeah. I saw some awesome cards of yours though. Like recently, uh, um, you know, some prisms like out of, uh, Oh yeah. The new of, prisms. Yeah. I yeah. Saw, yeah. Those are cool. Some of the, um, ice cracked ice and things like that. They're really, yeah. they're really sharp. Yeah. yeah, I have family members and people I know. They'll DM me on Twitter and everything <laughs> else and say, "Hey, I can pull one of your cards." Nice, it's nice, kind of cool. Yeah, so it's pretty interesting, you know. Now, but go ahead. Do, do you collect? Do you collect your own cards? Do you do you have a, a Gus Farrak collection? Oh my god, my dad did. Yeah, yeah. I got here. Wait, uh, oh, let me get something for you. Yeah, to show yeah, you. yeah, for sure. That's great. <laughs> what dad wouldn't right wants to start oh, a collection I, I for. Uh, Right, I know I would. I'd have a yep. big old, big old collection. Oh yeah, I had some so of them. these. I didn't do these, right? These is all my dad. Okay. Oh, uh, and these are old, like so. I played a long time ago, but like college. I don't know if you can see that. Like, yeah, like, he see has it. every card, like every. Oh, this is awesome! Like all the different ones, like they came in. You know, there was an autographed one. There's a different style. Yeah. You know, uh, all the inserts, you name it. This you is the cool. And it's my dad just put this. I mean, I have thousands of them back there, but he put them all. This one was really cool. The pennant card. I, I remember that. Yep. Um, and, and the, so the one on like the football. The football. That, yeah. Yeah. Those are pretty cool. Gus, he treated it as a set, right? He he literally, like you had said, he collects all the sets. He wanted. Oh, my God. He was so look, look, I mean, there's cards in here that this I've never awesome. seen anybody put up online or anything, but. There's just so many. And then there's a whole nother <clears throat> one. You know, you don't realize how many cards you have. Like they used to the, have these little the pogs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like the coins. That, but he used to have that. Um, oh my God. So many. Like, I don't even know where he got all these because I didn't give them to him. <laughs> he would just go collect them. I don't know if you guys could see all that. I can like, see them. It's crazy. It's crazy. On. Yeah. Like there's so many. And the most of them were, were you know, Washington. Um, 
and I got a lot of other teams that I played for, but like these are all just Washington. It's crazy. But that that's is so put together. He loved it. That is awesome. He, and he was so proud. I mean, that's you know, <laughs> like I was telling Jay when you got up and, and walked away, I said, Man, I can't imagine. I would do the exact same thing, right? Yeah, I mean it's collection. crazy to be able like, to start your own collection of your the, kids the big out. pennant. Like yep. there you don't even yeah. see those anymore. And then I thought I those that. were the coolest things when they came out. Oh yeah, they were so cool. And then this one. <clears throat> I mean, this is cool for me just to see these these cards that oh, I grew up, grew up these with. From Donruss Studios. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So, oh yeah, that's uh. So he literally collected this whole set I, I like, might, of all the guys. I, I might still have one. Let me. So I have one of every guy that was in this whole set. And my let's see those. Let's, let's let's see let's see a couple of. Those. Let me see if I can uh, get them out of here. <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of funny. Like, there's Troy Aikman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> oh my god, they're like glamour shots, dude. They are. <laughs> they need the lasers in the background, the right? Goat, you know what I mean? Oh and then gosh. there's another Jerry Rice. Like these yeah. massive cards. Yeah, they're huge. I can't they're find mine. Shots. I know I have a Drew Bloodsoul around here somewhere. Oh yeah, there's a Barry. Yeah, yep. Mike yep. Irvin. Look at that Barry, like. <laughs> I mean, if I show that to him right now, man, it's all it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> Steve Young, Emmett. I don't know what year are these. 87 Really? That old? Ninety seven? I I I yeah. have a Drew Blood still somewhere around here. I, th I thought they been, were earlier. There's the Farve. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I have that pitch. I have that one somewhere. <laughs> I mean, look I at that Reno. Yeah. That is awesome. I, it's pretty cool. So he collected all these, you know what I mean? Marino, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mr. Always Tan Marino. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, Tony, Tony Banks. Bank, Tony Banks. Tony Banks had one. Is that Tony I think, Banks? I think he oh just fumbled. God. I think he just fumbled again. <laughs> Jeff Blake. Jeff Blake. They, they just make me laugh. They're Here, funny. wait. Who's that? That is Kerry Collins. Nice. Wow. All right, here's the one. Yeah, test He's me, test me. Him. There's my boy Drew Bloodsoul. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Look at the what's what with the he, eyes there, man. Yeah, is what he, is he doing in this? Yeah. Is he like well, gonna I mean, murder come, someone in this? Come, or what come on, that's that's his glamour shot, you know. He look, looks like he might be ready. He doesn't to go look like that when he sells his wine now. I, I know. Been, that I was know. a little creepy. Right. That was a little creepy. All right, how about this one? Uh Jeff George. There you go. Wow. I like this game. Pretty boy Jeff George, wasn't it? How about that one? Uh oh, uh O'Brien no not O'Brien uh, Neil O'Donnell Neil, Neil O'Donnell O'Donnell that's after the Steelers yeah yeah <laughs> uh Jim Harbaugh yeah there you go here's R.I.P. Warren Moon no Steve McNair yeah yeah with the old home yeah another wine guy Rick Meyer Rick Meyer Jay you're slaying these man oh yeah I'm not I'm not gonna oh, miss you gotta one. know this one say how yeah. So Junior and I play together in in Miami. That is, oh, I can see it. I can. Oh, Heath. I'm surprised that one's not ripped in half, Gus. Nah, Heath and I really didn't have any beef. <laughs> Who was it? It was Heath 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 Schuler. Oh, okay. So I don't know if you remember Donovan. Remember Slash? They had the, they had the competition. Yeah, 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 Cordell. Yep. I I met Slash, and I was I was young. Let's see. I got it. See, so I got it's it. Just it's just kind of funny. There's my. Oh, you got yeah, you got a Cordell Stewart. I got one. There he is, yeah. Around I here too. He was sitting down, and I walked up to get his autograph, and I was young, and uh, I stepped on his foot and and <laughs> messed. I I scuffed up his white sneaker. You could tell he was upset, but he wasn't gonna get mad because I was little. You know, he's like, oh, yeah. come, on, come on, big guy, you know, <laughs> messing up my shoes. Yeah, so, that's funny. Uh, yeah. So what 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 do you guys collect? Well, I love vintage baseball, just just like you do. I know that's that's your thing. I also like some game used memorabilia stuff. I'm not big on the you know the player worn or uh, you know the stuff that a lot of the stuff they put out now. But I I love I love getting some of the game used. Yeah, this kid walked by the locker room and and looked at the jersey and they put it in a card now and say it's I, <laughs> right right it's, you know it's game like, used yeah yeah it's it's terrible but like you know it's like this Kenny Pickett. Right, I don't know if you can see that. Can yeah, it. that's yeah, a good it's one. Just, it, it's just a swatch on there. Is it the right? sticker? Yeah, it's a sticker, and um, I don't know why the sun's so bad here. 
you know, well, you but, said that's but, what they sent you too, right? You just get a, a bunch of stickers and just sign away, right? Yeah. And that, I mean, I don't always enjoy that. Right. You know, but um, I, I mean, I got some stuff on eBay. Like uh, you probably like that one. Who is that? Rod Carew? Ryan Sandberg. Ryan Sandberg. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. The sun's terrible right now. Yeah. They're, yeah. You could still make them out though. Wait. And um, I'm trying to think. I got a good one over here somewhere. But I sold my Mickey Mantle. I had a 56 Mickey Mantle, which was awesome. Right wow. on. That had to be tough to sell. That's a, that's a, yeah. that's a gorgeous card. Yeah, it is. I mean, I got a lot of other mantles, but they weren't, it wasn't graded that great. And I'm yeah. like, I'm going to get a 56. I'm going to go and get a, you know, I want to get a good graded one. Yeah. yeah. The way you want it. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, it's just, I collect a lot of pirate stuff. You know, I've, at the beginning of the season, I was hoping O'Neill, you know, they would all be, they were doing really well. And then they were, they, they were shredding it. Yeah. Apart. They were doing real well. Now, are you collecting any, anything modern at all? Oh my God. Yeah. So my huh. sons and I, so what we do now, what our big thing is now is that we collect rated rookies. Oh, I love it. So like when we get a new one, we, we upgrade like, uh, you who's know, that like, Alvin Kamara? Uh, yeah. So. Alvin Kamara, we upgraded to a black, right? Because as they get older, they get prices go down. So we collect every year of rated rookies. Um, different one like CJ Bethard. Yep. You know, now I can't give him away online. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, it it's just kind of funny how it is. Um, but that's kind of we collect rated rookies, so it's a lot of fun that way. Uh, we were buying like during the pandemic when everybody was bored. We we're probably buying way too many boxes and, yeah. and getting in, you know, getting on whatnot and yeah, doing and getting doing into breaks. breaks. And are you every sport? Are you collecting, you know, hockey and basketball? And I I have some because I'm a Pittsburgh guy. I have some Sid yeah. the Kid and uh, you know Mario and yeah, you know some of the stars from from the from the hockey. Uh, I like that. I like NBA. So we collect a lot of NBA. Well, if um, we were all smart right now, we'd be buying a lot of the boxes with Wem- Wembayana. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That kid. But I, it's like my son said, it'll probably be the most expensive they are right now. Cause oh, totally. you know, who knows if he, what he's going to do. You, you know, know I mean? you guys are, at, I'm, I'm a <clears throat> novice compared to you two, as far as the sports, the sports card world goes. And it's still like, it's mind blowing to me. The rookies you can get, like these outstanding players, right? And then everything's around the hype with these people, right? Like Jackson Holiday's like a 17-year-old kid and his cards are worth 10 times more than a Trout rookie if it's the right card. It just blows my mind. Oh, no. You, I mean, I I complain. I was going to swear, but I complain <laughs> all the time to my kids about that. Like, right. you know, here's a kid that's never proven anything and Jerry Rice's rookie card is, doesn't even sniff what yeah, his, It bothers me. You know what I mean? I don't know why, it's, but it bothers like, me. Yeah, it's like I can go get a Wayne Gretzky Opeachy rookie card, maybe for like twenty five hundred bucks, you know, yeah. graded. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know, there's other guys that can't even hold his jock strap out there, and their cards are worth more. It's so weird too, because I, I, I feel like it's funny you brought up that card. I, I feel like that's a really undervalued card right now. Oh, you know, they- yeah, there's no doubt. You can go in there like the two cards I want to get is the, you know, the. The bird magic and and uh, you know the, what, the they're all three on it. Uh, Julius Jordan. Irving, yeah, Irving. Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> I've been looking for one, but I don't want to grade it. I want to get a good one that's you know because yeah. I'm paying for way more for somebody to grade. I just want that card, right? You same, want the rock card. same with my a Nolan Ryan rookie with him and um, can't forget the other guy on it. But um, you know those are two cards that I really yeah. want to get. Yeah. Where uh, do you predominantly go sniffing around for them? Are you a uh, eBay guy or just local shows or where do you usually? Well, I mean, eBay makes it anywhere, you know, makes it easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what I really love doing is like I'm on some sites that will have people will put their stuff up at auction. Yeah. You know, so go on the just auction. Any, and any, you ever, just any day and, people can put it on there? Well, it's just like they'll go find a collection somewhere. Like the last one was in Wisconsin. Oh, I got you. Okay. You know, and then they just put the whole collection up and they separate them and you can bid yeah. on what you want. And that's kind of fun um, to do that. Uh, you know, eBay is, 
you know, somebody has a card up for five bucks and you offer them three and he's like, no, I'm not taking it. Uh, yeah, I, it's it's kind of funny. You know, it's just funny. some that of that is, stuff is, is crazy. That is me, so true. So let I me guess. ask you this, Gus. Have you ever gone to like estate sales or, or you know, an old barn somewhere? I always picture like if we were lucky enough, right, you go find like American Pickers or something and you come across this crazy collection. Have you ever? Uh, I've, all, I've never gotten that lucky. I uh, the closest thing that that like that that has happened to me is when I was playing in Washington. Um, so Rennie Knott was like the anchor for the sports station, and then his film guy Rich Daniel was the camera guy with him all the time. So he's always in. They're always in the locker room every day, and that's what yeah. they do, right? So you get yeah. to know these guys. And at one point, I tell a story about collecting cards with my dad and all this, and Rich comes up to me and he goes, "Hey." Um, would you be interested in buying a collection? And I said, yeah, of course. What is it? And he goes, well, I got some. I'll bring them in next time. Or you can come out to the car. And I said, okay, yeah, bring them in. So Usually it's 88 Don Ross baseball. Yeah, so I go out <laughs> to the car. You know, I go out and, and see them all. And it's just, uh, you know, they used to put them in all the sleet, in the binders, you know. That's yeah, how all the yeah, cards yeah. were. And it was all 50s, 60s, and 70s. And he was a pirate fan. Oh, perfect. They were all pirate. They're most of them were pirates. So it was jackpot, Jemenis, jackpot. So many is everybody in there. And yeah. then, but there's a, like almost the whole 61 top set. Oh, shit. And I think I'm missing like 20 cards out of that, but all now, the good ones. Now that's the one really. with the wood, the wood border looking, right? No, no, is no. Six, six, 61. Oh, no. Six, well, which one is 61? I got, I think I got one around here somewhere. I don't, but that was like the man, that was like the, um, not Mantle, but, um, the other guy, you know, that was Yuri set the home run record and oh, Mar oh yeah. Mar 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So no, it 61, did the wooden, didn't it have that green, like that wooden green to it? No, I think not, it did. no, I'm looking at it as a white border. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm, uh, I think I'm thinking of 62. Uh, yeah. but anyway, so he had yeah, all these yeah. incredible cards in there and he goes, yeah. Hey, I said, well, you know, what do you want for him? He goes, I just got to pay my taxes, dude. I'm like, well, what do you owe in your taxes? And he's like, like 3,800 bucks. And I'm like, done. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's the only time I ever bought a, somebody's collection. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, and, and I'm like, in my head, I can remember like, so Saturday nights before games, you're bored, you're sitting in your room, you know, and you're just trying to relax. I would watch um, TV and like, you know they'd have cards on there and different things and then yeah. the internet as i got older the internet came in and you could search stuff and there was always like people selling their whole collection and 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 i'd be like hey honey i could buy this whole collection of cards for like five grand but it's like you know two hundred thousand cards and all this other stuff and she's like don't you dare bring don't don't out. don't bring you gotta go yeah. through them all <clears throat> yeah but i actually enjoy doing that you know yeah. what i mean like so during the pandemic my sons kind of were in it. I'd buy them cards. Gus, how old, how old are your sons? You keep mentioning your sons. How old are they? So they're 25, 24. Okay. Um, my, my oldest will be 26 in October. But I always kind of got them packs of cards. We go to places, you know what I mean? I take yeah, them to even they were, when they were kids. Yeah, they and they had a bunch in a little bin and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then the pandemic hit and they're all home, right? They have nowhere to go. We're all, and we just said, let's go get them all out. Let's, we just brought Bin after bin, and we actually cataloged all the cards. Wow, it was crazy. I mean, it took months, but we had months, right? yeah. You had, you had time, we didn't have anything else to do, and so we cataloged. I think we, I think just just my card, not like my all my dad's and everything, but just my cards. I think we had 70,000 wow cards. That's insane, you know what I mean. And then we start looking at them and sleeving all the ones we think are, are valuable or. You know, could be you know just so they last longer because a lot sure. of the a lot of that old paper just you sure, know, corners got yeah. bumped and all that stuff. But oh man, and that that got him into collecting, right? That got him right oh, into yeah. the heart of it. So then, whatnot was big. We were doing whatnot all the time, and and but they only like new stuff. They don't like any of the old stuff. They don't like any of the 50s, 60s baseball, none of that stuff. No, they don't like any of that. They okay, just so want they're, they're they just the, want optic and all So they're that. the example of what we were talking about. They like the prospects in that, right? Yeah, well, sort of. We or all they hate, just like the we superstars all hate the college. in the... we all hate the like it has to be the professional uniform. Yeah, like, I, I hate the college. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't like the college uniforms no. on guys and stuff like I hate that. It. Or it's it's a picture of them and there's no number on, right. you know what I mean? Or right. it's not yeah. the number they're wearing. It's like yeah. just they wanted to make money and put some stupid picture out. Like, yeah, no, I agree with you 100% on that. And then you see pictures, you're like, that's the picture you're going to use of this guy? Like, that's the worst. <laughs> Like you don't, you didn't take like your digital camera didn't take a hundred of that guy. And that's the best one you well, got out of it. Well, let lot. me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I mean, you're obviously a professional athlete. You don't have a choice, right? I mean, do they, do oh they, no, we have no choice. Over what you have no use. choice. It's whatever they find. They could have, they could have had you picking your nose. You would have no choice, right? Yeah. That's whatever they want to use. That's crazy. Um, that's crazy. I would well, think that the athlete would have some type of say in that. No, what? because a photographer who takes a picture owns it. And then he gives yeah. the rights to, the you know the that like panini and tops and all that buys the picture off the photographer. You think there's ever been a time though that the athlete just said, "I hate this picture," right? And oh, I'll go. There's no doubt. Billy right? Billy Ripken. Yeah, the with the F, face. the F face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Billy I Ripken mean, was pissed about that. Yeah, I mean, there, I'm sure there's pictures that have been taken. You know. Yeah. Um, that guys didn't want out there, but I mean, I'm sure I'm sure you know some athletes who are you know, temperamental to say the least. And if they didn't catch him at a good angle or something, I'm sure they said, you know, I don't want this card out there. I mean, how many pictures do you think there are of Peyton Manning with his big ass head and that, <laughs> that was the wrong way? And he's like, no, uh, do not put that picture out there. Right, right. You right. know what I mean? Like he probably laughed about it, but he was serious too. Yeah. Yeah, so, I would think so, man. So Gus, I, I wanted to I wanted to show you. You got you got good uh, you got good taste. I love those cards. They're they're what are they? What 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 are they graded? Uh the bird is that the Nolan Ryan one he was talking about? Yeah. 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 Is it really? Yeah. So a lot of times, um, I don't mind oh, yeah. certain cards have lower grades as long as you know it, it the color, the quality, the the centering is good. Um, this got a four. Yeah, that's pretty good. And and but it's just one of those really nice looking fours. You know, there's there's a lot of different, you know, there as you know, there's there's different fours, really. There, there's some that are so off center and they don't, they don't look nice, you know? So I yeah. try to look, I try to look for appearance. Um, and then this one is a, this got a six. Oh, that's really nice. And uh, that's like one of my favorite cards of all it, time. It's, How wild is that? Those are literally the two cards that he said he was after. Well, they're, they're two of the, I mean, two of the, those are like cards. iconic cards. Yeah. I mean, I, I had to have, I had to have both of those. I, I remember in the nineties Pacific, um card company had yeah. this had this nolan ryan set i don't know if you remember this gus um and the one thing like you had a one in a million chance to pull a nolan ryan rookie so when i was a kid i used to buy these pacific cards all the time just hoping i could somehow... yeah, I remember that pack yeah it was like pink on the pack or something right yeah it, and it was ridic- pink or something? it was ridiculous they had like pictures the whole set was all nolan ryan it was maybe like a hundred card set you know they have nolan ryan riding a horse you know just weird stuff man yeah, like, oh yeah i remember that yeah, yeah no the, the one coolest card was nolan ryan with his face all blood after he got done you know uh I, well actually I, that was when he got a uh the ball he beat up ventura he, he beat up ventura but this was when he took a, a pitch a hit back to the face i want to yeah. say but uh so that card was always so cool to me because i remember it as a kid and and wanting to have that card and yeah. then and then the the bird magic and irving card i mean it's one of the coolest cards that you could possibly want ever it's yeah you know. yeah i mean they're all they're cool because there weren't there weren't a million of them made and you know and most of them that were are out there are, are beat the shit because people put them in there yeah. did what you know well, i can spe- remember taking yeah. my brother's cards and throwing them against the wall and if everyone stayed closer you and your buddy would get them and he you know he wanted to kill me but yeah that's just how it was like and there were favorite people that i had like that i loved to watch or would always remember um you know that i i just wanted to like willie stargill i got a bunch of his cards just because yep. that was, i loved watching him play <clears throat> your pittsburgh guy yeah yeah i mean that kind of stuff um and, uh, you know, obviously the Steelers, I mean, I remember going and getting a five cent pack of cards at the little store and, and opening up tops and, you know, there was a Lynn Swan in there. It was like, oh my God, I just got a little Lynn Swan, you know, yeah. anybody else on there, I had no idea it was, but any Steeler, it was great. Yep. Yeah. Brent. So what do you, what do you think us of, of the whole grading? I mean, 
it's kind of it's kind of taken everything over right in in the card world um there's kind of a controversy i think a lot of people as far as if it's not psa you know people don't even want to look at it or buy it jay actually you had the the president of it was hga yeah that yeah. we had on the show the CEO, and he, yeah. it broke down and explained how they grade and everything else which i thought was a really good episode especially for learner you know people learning the the get it, just getting into the game um but what are your thoughts on it you know the raw well, different companies what do you what do you think there's a couple of things like you know there's sgc hga psa all these all these um companies that authenticate the cards or yeah. you know give them a grade all this stuff um I prefer companies that just you pay a price, you get the card graded and they send it back to you and it's pretty fast. I've sent cards to PSA. I haven't got back in a year and it's just ridiculous. Like, does it take you that long? Now they may be having a guy graded, like looking through the, you know, the the jewelers thing and and all that. But I don't know. I I don't, I never liked that PSA. Like if you send a, Roberto Clemente card in and it got a 10 and it's all of a sudden worth 25,000 and you got to pay. pay an extra thousand dollars for it now. What's up with that bullshit. though? I mean, it's yeah. so dumb that they right. do that and okay. Yeah. I'll pay a little more money to get it insured. Right. But don't charge me because I sent you a card that all of a sudden it got a good grade and, and all of a sudden I got to pay more money because I it got agree. a good grade. Totally agree. And what, that kind of loses its validity, though, man, because why wouldn't this company give you a higher grade if they can make more money? I've always thought that. I've always thought, like, why wouldn't they give more tens if they can make more money off of that, right? But PSA, are they the only ones that do that or no? I'm pretty sure, like, SGC, you just send it in. And now yeah. you can get different kind, like, like so, for instance, Beckett. Uh, let's see if I got a Beckett here. So Beckett... You can get a Beckett, right? And I don't know if you guys can. Uh, yeah, I can see it. Yep. So and that, but that looks up, like an older one. That's the, is that a BVG? No yeah. One? So yeah, there's BVG. Yeah. It doesn't say much. And then there's other Becketts that you can get. Uh, let me see if I have one here. Like this one, like uh, the Zion, right? Where you can look, and all of a sudden it tells you the corners are nine and a half, and right, right. you know what I mean, like why right. it got graded, what it is. I like that, but they charge you extra for that, so. I understand that part of it, yeah. Right. But just because I send you a card and it gets a better grade doesn't mean you should charge me more. Yeah, no, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. You're kind of saying, listen, if you are going to charge me more, explain why. There's no rhyme or reason either, right? They're going to give you the grade and say, here, now you yeah. owe us the extra money. And and I I am surprised that PSA has such, you know, a hardcore following because that's what I'm saying. They don't have subgrades, right? Like like you yeah. just. You just mentioned you like them, and so do I. Um, and and they don't do nine point fives, you know. So it, it's a big jump. I mean, you're if, if you're getting a nine, you know, if it's not a ten, it's a nine, you know. So it's I, I'm just surprised that they have such a hardcore following, but but they do. I mean, I I like their cases. Um, yeah, you know. I mean, all that's good, and I think other cases are good. Like, right? Uh, I, I know I got an SGC around here somewhere. Yep, the, the um, tuxedo, tuxedo cases. Yeah, you know, like, so, like, this Vlad Guerrero's SGC. See, that, that to me is nicer looking. Like, that's a nice, you know, it's, that's it's sharp. Right. PSA it doesn't, you know, simple. and, and <laughs> they put deals out all the time, you know, and, and you can send them in and get them back pretty quick. Yeah. And, and it's pretty simple. You know, SGC's machine, really come a long way. Well, they have a machine that grades it, it grades the cards all the same exact way. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing. People, oh, it's SGC. I it's not PSA. It doesn't right. matter. Like, like we like we like Beckett, right? We use Beckett a lot to get our cards graded. Um, because you can get the, you know, if you have an old card, like, okay, why is it a six? Well, it's out of line. Like, so if you're gonna buy it, right, and you can see that, like you talking about the uh, Nolan Ryan rookie, right, right, right. All of a sudden, you you don't care that it's a four. But if all the things are exactly equal, then you're all right with it, right? Yeah. But if the centering is a zero, <laughs> you know, and something else is a six, like I don't really want that card. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um there's just so many factors into, and I think that just because the money got so big into it and and people just went that route, it just you know, it changed the game. It's probably gonna come back a little bit and you're gonna be able to get cards, you know. Um, 
a lot cheaper, which I'm already seeing. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask you. You know, the, the market's obviously dropped quite a bit in the last year and a half or so. Um, are you are you buying Are you buying right now or No, we haven't done anything in a while. We kind of we kind of, um, you know, every now and then when I sell some, I'll buy some. Yeah, online, but I haven't. I've just been busy. So I've been building a whole network for all of our former NFL alumni, okay. uh, NFL alumni media network, so our guys can own their stories. Because uh, for years we've gone to, on to everybody else's stuff and told our stories and everybody makes profit from them instead of us. So I started this for our guy so that now you get sponsorship for your show and everything that you're doing. Most of our guys don't have any clue how to you know, run a podcast, right? Because it's not yeah. just doing a Zoom call. It's I got to go out and post. I got to go out and do this and do exactly. all these other exactly. things. And yep. I got to edit the best section of this. Edit, yeah. Put it out there, right? So, I mean, Kenny Anderson wasn't doing that, right? <laughs> so, like, we have a Stars and Stripes show. It's Kenny Anderson, Anthony Munoz, Dave Lapham, Jim Breach. None of those guys are doing it. So we decided let's build it so that we'll be the tools. They just deliver the incredible content. It's a great idea. I think, you know, a lot of these players, like you just said, you hit the nail on the head. They don't, they don't know how they just don't have the fundamentals, right? We had Marlon Kerner on, you know, the former Buffalo Bills, who's a friend of mine. And he, the same type thing that he's doing, right. Is athletes when they're done playing, you know, making sure that they have the tools to keep on going. And and it's basically, you know, what you're doing, you're doing a really good thing for these players by saying, Hey, you know, you have rights to this stuff. And, and yeah. so that's, that's really cool. It was the same, it's same idea, you know, that he's doing with a business to try to make sure that these guys have all the tools they need for when they're done playing. Yeah. You know, and it's hard as a former player, because when you're playing, you know, there's a couple things that are important to you, right? It's mine was my family and football, which was my other family. Yeah. Um, some other guys, they love business and they're going to do that, but not many guys do because we're all making our money in football. That's what, you right. know, the right. teams don't care if I want to go pursue something else, right? As long as you're at practice and all this stuff, yeah. but they're not going to help. They're going to push it. Like they'll bring stuff in an off season that nobody really listens to. You know what I mean? Like right, I remember, right, right. you know, all the talks about finances and everything and guys, you know, you're 20 four years old you don't give a crap yeah they would bring now somebody like, to talk to you God, right? i wish i would have listened to that a little more you know <laughs> right? I mean? but, yeah, but it is but... what it is and it's about you know it's about helping our former players um, yeah. because there's opportunities out there and times have changed incredibly since we played yeah. uh with with you know these things so i'm right. teaching our guys like look you can do a show right from that like right. the cameras are incredible you know put your pair of airpods in and, you know, we got three or five guys on a show and it's an incredible time. It's like being back in the locker room. That's cool as hell. And I think a lot of them don't realize how many people do want to talk to them. You know, how many fans want to hear their stories and how many people want to talk to them? Like you just, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things like a cameo and all the stuff out here. Yeah, but, yeah. But, you know, it's just I said, look, I mean, there's a bunch of us in a room. And then the other part is we're all together and we're all from different places and backgrounds and. That was what's great about a locker room also, but it's just telling your stories, going on each other's shows, telling those stories. And, you know, you're talking current football, but you're also talking uh, incredible stories that happen. Glory days, yeah, man. Yeah. And then you have guests on and and um, just like you guys are doing now. So right. it's been a lot of fun. So anybody can watch it and go to NFLAlumniMedia.com yeah. and, and check out all of our shows. And um, we're currently always trying to upgrade and make it better for our guys and um plug that for so sure. it's it's been it's been really good and we have you know there's some other people that collect cards there's not you know there's a friend of mine who he he interviews a lot of people that collect cards and he's interviewed a lot of people that have played professional sports mm -hmm. that have done it you know because it's just a hobby everybody right. you know some people really love it some people kind of like it but it's doesn't matter anybody can do it yeah. now now speaking of uh you know helping out um these these kids it, are you still involved in the the brain health um yeah so i i so what that company when i first kind of moved back to pittsburgh uh it, it's named after roberto clemeni and that's actually how i um 
uh, met Junior was through Clarence Carlos, who's the CEO of that company. Oh, okay. um, you know, you know, they got kind of wanted to work with Roberto Junior, and you know, one of uh, Roberto Clemente Senior's sayings is, you know, if if you're not doing something every day to help people on Earth, and you're wasting your time on Earth, something like that. Yeah, oh, yeah I remember that. Right? Yep. Yep. So that was kind of the premise of it because brain health is so important. So what we did was they developed an app uh, called Roberto. And basically you play some sight games on it and it gives you your, your kind of your brain performance level. I love and it. It doesn't tell you if you're sick or not, but it gives you your <laughs> level. So then every time you play, you have something to go off of and match to. Okay. Right? It's like taking your heart rate. Like if your heart rate yeah, is sick, yeah. if your heart rate's 52 all the time and all of a sudden you take it and it's 89, it's like there's something, something, up. something, something wrong. So, they're kind of partnering with other people now, and I was with them for a little bit, but uh, they're partnering with other people to um, put it on different platforms. And they're just kind of like an add-on now that, yeah. you know, it's like the Apple Watch, <laughs> right? You can check your check your heart rate, check your blood pressure, do all that. And That's awesome. And yeah, so it's pretty cool. I was with them for, for a few years, and it was a startup. I never did business before, so learned right. a lot. It was really interesting, and I'm still good friends with all those guys. Very cool. Well, yeah, and the best part about it was, uh, you know, Roberto <laughs> Jr. came out of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? right. Exactly. Exactly. So, cool. so it, yeah, it was really cool. I, he had a bat made for him. I don't know. I got it around the house somewhere. He gave me a bat one time. Very next cool. Time. We'll see you next yeah. time. Yeah. Next <laughs> now, time. Uh, you, you mentioned some of the players collect cards. Have you seen uh, AJ Dillon? Have you seen him him collecting? I have. And, and you know, that's you see one what of he... the guys you, that, you know, he'll, he does a great job. He's taking advantage of who he is and who he knows. Big like, time. Which, and that was Why the not? thing too was, was, Maybe I shouldn't have been this way, but I was like, I'm in a locker room. I'm not going up to my best friend and asking him for his autograph on his card. You know what I mean? Like my dad would ask me sometimes and I'd be like, yeah, it's for my dad. You know what I mean? But, right. but for me, like to go, like if we were playing the Packers and, you know, yeah, Dorsey Levin's over there and, and I'm going to have, I have a Dorsey rookie card. I'm not going to, Hey, we, he probably would have done it. No big deal. Sure, but sure. it was just a thing with me that I, I didn't do it. But, you know, AJ understands you know, what he has and he's yeah. so, doing a great job. So Donovan, I don't think you know about AJ Dillon. Do you, um, as far as the cards? No, I don't, well, I don't know the story you guys are referring okay. to. So, so real quick. So, you know, their viewers probably don't know as well. Um, after the game, he'll, he'll bring cards and after the games, he'll have the players sign them. And sometimes he'll make, he'll have them put like one of one on okay. it. Yeah. And and they look personalize awesome. them and stuff. Yeah, like there's this one card with uh like Justin Herbert. I want to say it's Justin Herbert and Jordan Love. And so he had Jordan Love sign it and then Justin Herbert signed it after the game and mm-hmm. and had it's, you know, labeled one of one and Okay. And, I mean it's an amazing looking card now, you know, it's Sounds like that guy will have a card company down the road, right? He'll be selling ah. those cards. They'll be like, "I got the one of one Dylan uh, you know, P- it, P- it'll be Panini and then the Dylan brand." A lot of people hate it, um, but you know, I think it just comes down. Oh, to I don't. It. I mean, to me, it's like that's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah I think that's cool as hell. Yeah, I think that's yeah. way cooler than some guy sending you a hundred cards and you are signing them. And just gonna say, them. or a yep. hundred yep. stickers, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, you know, there were cards back in the day, like people used to sign in pen. Now, if it's not in a sharpie, it's, you know, and it's like, yep. you know, yeah. I have a Lemieux card that that my friend um has and he keeps wanting me to get it graded for him but it's in a blue pen it's a rookie lemieux card that he signed but you can't even see it but you can see him it's probably his signature but right it's, you, you can't you know what i mean nowadays it's probably it might even affect the card and right the wrong I was, way. that's what i was just gonna say yeah but back you know it had the sentimental value and it had the fact that he had yeah. signed that card yeah so that's what he's doing is, is pretty cool it's just it's the same thing as you know changing jerseys or something like that. Right, yeah. and, right. I like you know, it. I like the idea. I would. I would t- personally. What I would do is if 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 you have like get somebody to sign it, I'd have a card, give it to them, say here, use one for you, sign this one for me, and it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. It's an exchange. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Now, uh, Donovan, you you think you ready for uh, six questions for Ghost? Let's get the uh, the six questions going. We're you okay. know we'll, we'll, we'll now, get this uh, yeah the rapid fire six questions. Now, now we, we didn't uh, we didn't prep we didn't prep you at all, Gus. So uh, in every episode we do we fire away six questions, three apiece, and we just have you answer them as as best as you can and yeah and as as rapid as you can. All right, fire away. 
All right. Uh, Donovan, you want to go first? I'm going to start. I, every guest, I need to know. We're from Buffalo. This is a big deal to us. You like the wing or the drum better with the Buffalo chicken wings? The wing or the drum? I'm the drum guy. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Jay, you're next. All right. Now, best quarterback of all time, in your opinion, and remember, we're from Buffalo, so you're not allowed to say Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to say him anyway. All right, good, uh, good. So, uh, I mean, right, that's, that's a hard question for me because I know a lot of these guys. Um, but for me, since we can't say Tom Brady, which I went anyway, but um, I just think, like, when you watch Joe Montana play, I mean, Dan Marino could sling the ball. There's different assets that these guys all possess, Elway sure. and, and and even today. But – Right now, when you look at it, I mean, I'm, Joe Montana to me was just running the offense, putting the ball where it needed to be, yeah. even though Jerry Rice was Jerry Rice. But, man, could he just, just go out and command it the way yeah. it needed to be done? Yeah, That's he awesome. would take it over. He would take it over, man. I know what you're saying. I, that feeling, he would just take it over. I think know? it's a great choice. All right, rapid fire. I'm still coming at you. Hardest hit you've ever taken? Michael Strahan. Okay. All so right. yeah. when, my, when Michael got inducted into the Ring of Honor for the Giants, I said, "I got you there, buddy. Don't forget it." Because it was the hard. <laughs> they they actually played it that hit when he got inducted on the big video screen. That was the hit they showed. It was me getting blasted from the back. They didn't say that I pissed blood for three days. So. Oh my God. I was going to be looking over here. As right. I think <laughs> that's great. Man. How did you feel about Brian that Mitchell when you were the? I guess that's a good question leading into it. How do you feel when you're the, the victim of that? I guess. But it's being played Strahan as the guy's greatest hit, hit ever. So Strahan yeah, got a big stop on uh, <laughs> no, it's part of football, part of right? Game, man. Part of the game, man. Yep, good answer. Good answer. Oh man. All right. My question number two. If you could only keep one baseball card in your collection, what card would it be? Uh it's easy. Brother Clemente, rookie. The rookie. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's my favorite card. Very cool. I don't I don't I don't have that one, so I, I I'm not gonna bring that on screen. Yeah. It's only a five, though, but there's a great story behind it. So uh, a five is day. really good for that card. So yeah, you I, love it. Go, I love it. I know this was, you know, I, I always veer back into the to the football because for me, I'm more that angle. You got you two are the sport. You two are the card nerds, right? I'm. I'm yeah. um, who is your favorite receiver to throw to? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I have had so many good players. Yes, you have. Me. Yes, you, you know, have. Just, just been really lucky to play with the people that I did. But I think my favorite just um, of all time was, was Randy Moss. Oh, wow. You know, um, just, right. just, just incredible athlete, incredible yeah. player, great in the locker room. I mean, I had so many, I mean, I could go down the list. Oh Henry man, Ellen, you had, a, you had a ton. Henry Ellen, Rod Smith. I mean, I played with the greatest show on turf with yep. those guys, but it was at the end of their career, but we all came in at the same time. So um so many really incredible players but for me the guy that was outstanding and all that was was randy moss right on that is awesome um so my last one isn't so much a question but i i'd like to hear kind of hear the story your 99 yard touchdown pass yeah that should have been a card right i have this you know where it is in my son's room but i have this great picture it's from behind the photographer was behind me when i threw it Tell tell me about tell me about everything like the call the call in the huddle yeah so the play so, who you're um, throwing to so it's just basically uh, we're in the dome in Minnesota we're playing the Bears which are a big rival mm -hmm. uh, they're on a drive to drive down our defense it's a goal line stand right they're on the five they get a yard right second down they get another yard third down they get another yard they decide to go for it they're on like the two yard line. Our guys stop them. They get to the one. The ball's on basically like the half yard line. So offense is going out. Uh, Daryl Bevel's uh, the OC, and he goes, "Hey, we're gonna call nine nine ninety nine FC." And I look at him, like, "What? Really? <laughs> From here?" He goes, "Yeah, why not? Let's go for it." So he calls it. I go into the huddle. We're all standing there. I said, "All right, we're gonna run nine ninety nine FC. It's just two by two formation." Um, you know, and we're playing the Bears. They're usually like a Tampa 2 team, but they come out and cover three because they think we're going to run the ball uh, with Adrian Peterson. Right. Who won? And, right. Yeah, right. right. So right. drop back, kind of checking the safety out. See, Peanut Tillman's on my left. I'm looking the tight end down. Now I'm cover three. This is something I've always known, but it's 
it's rarely you get an opportunity to do it in a game. They teach the corners to play in between the seam and the outside uh, if it's both goes, right? So they play both. So if you throw the seam, they can make the hit or make a pick. And so I'm staring down to Sante Shanko. He's the tight end on the left. And um, and I just let it rip over, you know, throwing the go ball to Bernard Berrien because he's the fastest guy we got. And I just let it rip. And when I throw it, peanut, it looks like I'm throwing it to the tight end. So he takes two steps in and then it just goes over his head. And it was like, it was like the perfect, everything was perfect about it. The protection was perfect. Yeah. Bernard was like, where they teach you to throw the ball. It's like three yards from the sideline, 45 yards downfield. He catches a perfect stride, you know, another yeah. 10 steps. He's like in the end zone. He's that and, fast, yeah. And like the picture from behind, it's just the ball in the air. And you see everything that I just explained in front of you. And, um, you know, I'm standing on like nine yards deep in the end zone after I threw it. And it's just, it, it was magical. It's a place. I mean, I don't know if I, I mean, I played in some loud stadiums, like right. Kansas City is probably like one of the loudest you could ever be, but in a dome, they're all loud. Right. But this yeah, was, yeah. the place was just going insane. It's not only, you know, throwing that touchdown, setting a record, but we're playing the bears. Right. Right. A right. Big rival in a big game to win. And, and, you know, we end up winning a division that year. It, and, and Tillman was one of the best, cornerbacks in the oh in the, he was amazing player. yeah he's amazing player he, you know that and peanut, i know that I, I've, I've used his name a lot but but you know i got to yeah, yeah that's an excellent story i would actually like to get my hands on one of those pictures from behind signed off by <laughs> one mr gus Ferrer. yeah we have to find out i don't know who has their i wonder if there's a if there if that picture is actually in uh what's it called you know where you can go get all pictures well, and how about this there. i'm gonna track down the photo yeah, All you right. sent it to me. I'll sign yep. it. Sounds yeah. good. I'll track down yeah. the photo. You're in charge of the rest. Yeah, I can do that. No, that is... no doubt. No doubt. No, I want to. I want to. Ending the better ending and the ending for the show would be. So after that game, we win. My sons are in the locker room. My son Gunner puts my jersey on. There's the. I knew the equipment guys. He's like, "Yeah, go ahead, take." Because they were like a special jersey, right? Okay. Like yeah. A one yeah. game kind of thing. And Gunner wears it. We go to this place by where we were staying in uptown in minneapolis and um so gunner orders the ribs he's got my jersey on the first rib he picks up he <laughs> drops it and rolls down my jersey i knew where that was going <laughs> so next day we fly back to st louis because i was commuting like before that but my family flew up so we fl i flew back with them and i get a call from dennis ryan who's our equipment guy and he goes gus where's that shirt i go i said i thought you Said I could take it. Yeah, he, gave it and he goes, he goes, well, the Hall of Fame called. They want it right away. And I'm like, <laughs> I go, oh, I said, my son dropped a rib on it last night. And my son, it. my and my wife got it in the washing machine right now. Oh my and he's god. He's like, what? Oh my God. But it came out perfect. And <laughs> I, awesome. I really should have just left the rib sauce on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, how did you not yeah. how did you not ever tell that story and sell that to like Tide? Or or arm and hammer, right? <laughs> so you could have did a yeah, commercial, right? I mean, you could have did the yeah. commercial with the rib coming it, it, down. It would have been it would have been great. But, that would have been you know, money, man. That would have been perfect. Yeah, that's that that's a that's a pretty funny story because I remember when it happened. I'm like, oh, Gunner, like, you know what <laughs> I mean? I never thought like story, it was dude. going to the yeah. to the Hall of Fame. That is awesome. Phenomenal. Yeah, congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. You know yeah. what? Congratulations on your your whole career. You had an awesome NFL career. I mean, yeah, man, we can't thank you enough. Like we said uh, a couple of times, and um, it was fun. It was fun. I hope you had a good time with it. I loved it. I loved it. I love talking cards. You know what I mean? It's just it's been going on a long time in my life. So whenever I get a chance to talk about it, it's it's really enjoyable. That's awesome. Thanks, Gus. All right. Thank you. I again appreciate for doing it, guys. This. All right. Appreciate All right, take it. Care. All, All right. right. We'll see you.